Hello, Gear Space. I'm Dave from Bitwig here at Superbooth. Uh, we just announced version 5 a few weeks ago in beta now. I just want to show you a few things that are related to it. Um, here I've got our polymer synthesizer, which we've always had, uh, well, for a while. Just an easy way to pick one oscillator from our modules, one filter, one envelope and just make things at a higher level. So part of this update is a family of MSEG inspired devices like this segments envelope here. So if I just wanted it to be in a one shot kind of mode, they'll just kind of dance along with whatever I do. But then they also have some unique looping modes for going back and forth. And since this is set in bars, I'm already got like an exact quarter note pattern there. So I'm kind of building a lot without going too far. Um, of course, you can go crazier if you like. If you don't want to synchronize to a bar, maybe you'd rather have a millisecond with smoothing turned off. <laughs> so. Whichever direction you like to go, there's lots of options there. But like I said, this is a, a family of MSEGs. We've got plenty of oscillators already, but sometimes it's fun, and I'll just turn off the filter for a moment, to simply uh, draw your envelope, your oscillator. bend and curve things or <clears throat> do whatever you like. So one section of this update is this family of MSEGs, which includes not just an envelope and an oscillator and a, and, a, and a low frequency oscillator, but also even a wave shaper in our grid. Maybe we could take one look at that real quick. So I have a different sound. Here. And if it's visible, I can kind of see the waveform before and after a wave shaper. Um, but now, because the idea of drawing a curve is much more than just an envelope, I could take something like our little transfer object here, our little transfer device, which again has the heart of a, uh, of a curve drawing bit. So. That's a linear transfer function like you'd expect. And then, what do you do? Something simple like curving it. Or go very crazy out of the way and just feel it as you change. So, five different uh, ways of accessing an MSEG. One way to save files and if you like what you have well you can switch between any of the other curves in our library or that you've made and just try them out because sometimes unexpectedly an envelope actually works pretty well for a, a LFO or something else. Um, beyond that Bitwig has always had this idea of modulations within devices but now we've expanded it so that even on the uh, track level say you can have modulators as well. So maybe I'll take that LFO I was talking about. And now, instead of it just living inside of the device, you'll notice this track, even its channel strip and its mixer is an available target for modulation. So now the mixer has become an instrument more than ever. So if it's making things cut in or out or controlling multiple devices, it can come straight from the track level. But it gets a little crazier than that. Let's, let's hear this curious project for a moment. So might have a level jump. Um, now, now that we do have track level ability to do modulators, what's interesting is you can put modulators straight on the project level. 
If I had something on the track level, I can now control that one track like we looked at. But if it moves up to the project level, now I can touch any fader, any parameter in the entire session, and more than that. We can touch the global parameters too. So let me play around and make a mess with this. We heard it's pretty straight 16th notes going on. Right. So if I turn on the groove bit, we turn the, the, the groove on. That's a little bit of fun, but it's too much all the time. And normally a groove is things moving over time. So I have a project modulator. It is going for two bars and then slowly ramping up. I think what I want to do is have that control the shuffle of the entire project. So now I'm kind of in each two bar pattern, and we can watch it on screen, seeing the shuffle amount jump up and grow. So it'll just get that weirdness at the end. <laughs> now, someone crazier than me might try using one of these modulators on the tempo. But maybe later in the day. I'm not going to do that for now. Yeah. So. <clears throat> This elevation of modulation is another part of what we've got going on. Um, on top of that, there's even some performance controls that have snuck in. So if I drag in a different session for a minute, just uh, some new ways to perform, actually. This is probably familiar as some kind of performance project. I have some clips. I can trigger them. And I do have this launch pad controller here. Um, we've done two things. That are, a little, that are kind of big. One is we've elevated the idea that if you have to press a pad to trigger a clip, maybe when you let go of a clip, that is an important gesture too. So the project recognizes that at all levels, not based on what controller you have. The whole system understands this as a time accurate gesture if you want to use it. And number two, Maybe you don't know until you're performing how you want each clip to trigger. Maybe every clip shouldn't trigger exactly the same every time. So what we've done in the interface is over here, now for the entire project, there are default settings saying, ah, I have a main trigger mode, wait one bar and then trigger from the beginning. And when I let go, don't do anything, just continue. And an alternate one that says, no, no, no. When I'm holding the shift button, like on this launch pad, trigger the clip immediately in a legato mode. We have some new legato modes there as well. And then when I let go, jump back to what I was doing. So this just turns into a different idea where I can, within the performance, decide how each clip should trigger. And, and we could give that a go for one moment here. So if I trigger normally, I press a pad. And they come in at the right time. Now, if I'd rather try something temporary, all I have to do, and I'll put the microphone down, is hold the shift button. If I let go of shift first, now it's a normal trigger and it'll continue doing what I'm playing. So it's just a different batch of performance gestures that might help in a live performance scenario. And finally, to cap off a performance type story, with all of these tracks now having uh, modulators, they also have remote controls that are available on the mixer. So here, if I'm moving from track to track, I've got some direct controls, parameter level controls, on my mixer for each one of those tracks. So if I'm starting back where I did with just the one clip, I can just pick a few controls that are going to be useful for whatever's playing.
So having all this available in one screen is just a handy, useful way to go. <clears throat> and on top of everything else, um, you have to use a browser. We re remade our browser in a modern way so that it lets you customize all of the context that you start clicking into. It has more metadata for helping you find the devices you're looking for. If I type in ring modulation, I'll find devices that do that, or if I, you know, along those lines. Um, yeah, so this is Bitwig version 5. We're in beta now, and we'll be released soon. Thanks for stopping by, Gearspace. Yeah.